Welcome everyone to Nuts and Bolts Sports regular NBA coverage for the league restart here in the bubble. We finally have some basketball and it did not disappoint here on day one. Um, Jordan, have you been kind of keeping up with the scrimmages with, with, uh, with in the past few weeks or have you just kind of just locked in for these games now? Um, yeah, it definitely was like trying to keep as much pace as possible. I mean, it's tough and some of them are on at like three in the afternoon, so it's a yeah. little hard to catch. But um, and we're gonna um, get that during the regular season yeah. or with these seeding games at least too, because like their games like one, two o'clock here, so like it's the first it's, one tomorrow. I think is like four. I was like, damn, still oh, is it work. Really? Yeah, yeah it, it's like it's so weird because I I think we're not used to even like in the preseason and in the postseason we're not used to seeing games at this time of day. Mm-hmm. So like I don't know what to expect from it if I'm being completely honest with you yeah i don't know what we're gonna get from like the players either like again tomorrow is you know i think portland and i forget who their opponent is but like you know the west coast team playing at four o'clock in the afternoon even though they've yeah. already been down here still it you know they're used to their certain schedules and not playing till later so it's definitely going to be interesting but yeah you're definitely right these uh yeah. these two games tonight were fun definitely definitely a great start it was like it did not disappoint you know we had the sort of highlight names obviously but then you had the big la matchup at the end of the day the first matchup i think people were a little you know they were a little hesitant like is zion gonna play is that gonna affect the way the matchup goes is utah gonna be um good without bogdan bogdanovich one of their uh or boyan bogdanovich one of their best uh scorers scorers so like is is that gonna influence the way the game is gonna go and i think i think we're both pretty satisfied with the way that both these games went <laughs> yeah and like i mean to your point like i think the first game was probably a little more slept on but i think it delivered like oh, just definitely. as well as it could for like the, those two not being like the two la teams i think they really still delivered i mean it was down to the wire last shot in and out and you know like the pelicans are fun to watch i mean that's, yeah. it was eye on their humming even yeah. even when he was sitting out you had like ingram and Lennon, ingram on guys fire, yeah. yeah they were going so yeah it was fun yeah, all right, let's go ahead and get right into it. Actually, before we get into sort of the nitty gritty of the game, I do want to talk a little bit about the kneeling before the anthem. This was something that was speculated a little bit um, coming into the games. We had an idea that the coaches were going to do it. Then we got the speculation that the refs were going to join in. So all signs are pointing to the players doing it as well. And then you obviously saw before the game, um, everybody kneeled, everybody was locked hand in hand. Um, I think it was a pretty powerful thing to to see. And I think it was a, a very strong statement by the league, by the players, by the coaches, kind of taking the power into their own hands. This is um, the NBA is a league that gives their players the power that I think they want more than any other league does. That's why I like to call it the best league. It might be my bias. I, I don't care if, if that's what you want to say. But um, I love that Adam Silver. You know, he's coming out here and saying, you know, this is this is a certain circumstance. I'm not going to reprimand anybody. The players want to do it. The coach want to do it. This is what they got to do. And and I think it really really did see uh, or send a powerful statement. Seeing them all there together with the Black Lives Matter shirts, I just thought that was really incredible. I wanted to give that a quick shout out. Did you have any thoughts? Yeah, I completely agree 100%. I mean, you talk about, you know, I think the word that they always use in the NBA is, you know, brotherhood. And mm-hmm. I think that was never more on display than um, in a situation like this where we have obviously so much going on outside of the, the Disney bubble. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to your point, too, with Silver, I mean, I, I don't think he's done – he really hasn't done much wrong since he took over as commissioner. I think yeah. he's been exceptional. And I think where he really shines is, like, these moments where he yeah. just doesn't try to overstep. He doesn't try to, like – you know have any he knows these guys are already like being controlled being locked in a bubble and then with everything else going on for him to just give them the freedom to express themselves and express their beliefs um and come together as a group i think is you know it says a lot about the players and says a lot about silver yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned Silver here because obviously he was thrown into the fire with the Donald Sterling thing. Like within the first what couple months it was of his yeah. his tenure as as the main commissioner of the league, and you know he handled that in a very respectable way. I think from the way that we would see it, and you know he continues to kind of show us that he does have that um, open mindedness that a lot of commissioners and, and head head executives of a lot of sports leagues don't. So I do definitely respect that. And I'm glad you gave him a shout out here. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the games now, and let's start with the first game of the night. That six thirty to six thirty is an early tip as well because we're not used to anything coming before seven here even on the east coast um so new orleans and utah utah winning that game 106 104 um donovan mitchell and mike conley each having 20 points jordan clarkson leading the way which i didn't even really feel <laughs> during the game with 23 points and then uh as we discussed brendan ingram leading the way for uh new orleans 23 points and jj reddick dropping 21 as well um new orleans maintained a pretty steady lead for most of this game and they you know they upped it all the way up to like 15 16 points in the 
the second and third quarter. So they they had a pretty stronghold over most of it, most of the game for for the almost the entire runtime until we got into that fourth quarter. And if I'm being completely honest with you, I think it's just where the inexperience of a young team really, really showed. We'll get into Zion in a sec, obviously, but um, I, I just feel like Utah, you know, Utah has been in the playoffs and even though they are still a younger core, they, they've been there. They know what to expect from these situations. And they showed that experience kind of chipping away at that lead. Whereas new Orleans was not really running an offense. It, it seemed a little bit sloppy if I'm being completely honest with you. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, it's, it was really fun to watch, you know, New Orleans, their ball movement, they were, you know, taking and making a lot of threes. Ingram, like you said, was, was really well. JJ was hitting some of those like incredible, you know, fading with a guy in his face, three pointers. Um, and they had some other guys stepping up too, but just, you know, like you said, come the fourth quarter, um, Utah, who I thought really missed um, Bogdanovich from you know, the whole game, just his like quirky play creating and obviously his shot making ability, but they just, found a way to get it done in the fourth. And I think, you know, touching on their, you know, past playoff success, I think that really, um, you know, helped them, especially in the closing moments. Although that Ingram shot, it looks yeah. so good and it, it just came out. So yeah, yeah that, that's, that's how it, it could go. Sometimes you, you call all the way back to still almost lose, but definitely ironic that a uh, Gobert, uh, who's the guy who kind of, you know, started all this, right, um, right. scores the first basket and essentially the you know, key free throws. There. Right, yeah, right. He was, he's not a good free throw shooter. So I was stunned. Oh. And he drew, he drew both of them, right? Didn't he? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that that is an interesting point too. Yeah, the fact that he made the first basket of the game and the last baskets of the game and, and sort of secured it for them. But uh, we just alluded to it. Let's let's get into Zion a little bit. You know, he showed up here in his sort of. Um, his bubble debut, I guess that, that's the best way to word it. Cause we, you know, we've, we've obviously, he's had a bit of a rocky season in terms of the way that he's been put out to, onto the court, his playing his minutes and all that, a lot of questions surrounding his health and whatnot. There was even a point where I think early in the season, we didn't even know if he was going to step on the court at all this season. He was just going to take the full year off. Luckily that didn't happen, but um, you know, still being held to 15 minutes here. Um, I think a bit of a combination right between the health concerns, but also he was away for, for quarantine and whatnot. And he, he had only gotten a couple of days of practice under his butt when he came back. Um, did, do you think that that majorly influenced the status of the game? Cause that seems to be the sort of general consensus down the, down the stretch. He didn't play in the final closing minutes cause he had hit that sort of cap. Yeah. And, and I get that. Like, I understand that he's, you know, they're trying to obviously he's their, 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 their top pick. He's their, their asset going forward. So you definitely want to like take you know precautions, especially with a unique situation like this. And, and with him having to leave the bubble and come back, I get that you wanted to keep him on a minutes restriction. And I, I was fine with that. What I didn't understand and what a lot of people were kind of alluding to on like Twitter and, and probably even talk shows after the game too, was like, if you knew he was on a minutes restriction, how did the last, how did you not have like in the back of your mind, Hey, if this is close late, we should have, we should save like at least the last two, two and a half, three minutes where he can come in and try and impact the game. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and play the what if, if they would have won, if not, like, you don't, you don't know that, um, you know, he takes somebody else's who might be a better shooter or a better, you know, playmaker or whatever. But at the same time, he's, you know, he's proven that he was pretty good in those, what did he have 15 minutes and he was six away from the field, 13 points. And, you know, just obviously just a destructive physical force. So it just would have been nice to see him get some crunch time minutes. Cause you want to see the young guys get that experience. This is part of getting your feet wet as a rookie. So um, it'd be interesting to see how they manage it moving forward. Cause obviously they're still fighting for a playoff spot. So they're going to need him to play crunch time. Yeah. Do you think that he's going to kind of be back up to his normal time in the next game? Or do you think they're going to slowly work him into it? Cause this new Orleans is obviously a team that's fighting for that eight seed in, in these sort of seeding games. And um, they have the easiest schedule sort of a carryover from the actual regular season schedule in terms of win percentage of the teams that they're playing here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, Portland is still above them in the rankings and Memphis, while they did lose justice Winslow, um, it's still a good team led by a couple of good young guys. And I'm sure that they're going to try to try their hardest to maintain that eight seed do you do you worry at all for new orleans after this loss um you know i mean the, the only word that i would have is just like not even so much memphis although i think they're still going to be competitive it's just portland you know getting everybody healthy getting Nurkic back um was obviously pretty huge for them and just you know even just giving dame and cj time to rest um just like any of the other superstars so i think they're going to be probably the more dangerous threat um than memphis would be for that eight seed but you know as new orleans you have the easiest schedule like you said and you have these you know young talented group of guys that could you know they have some size they have speed they kind of have a little bit of everything it's almost like they don't know exactly how good they are um which is typical of a young team but they have a lot of pieces that would be you know an interesting first round matchup for the lakers or the clippers it would be certainly you know, entertaining to watch um so i feel like they have to ramp zion up but at the same time i'm sure they're also 
they have a level that like they ramp them up to like they'll still be like a restriction like it's not like they're just gonna be like oh we're gonna ramp them up like we're gonna play in 35 minutes like they're ramping up will still be like there'll be a, a set cut off and it'll be just like tonight where you see it's that and there'll be some assistant coach with a stopwatch it's like nope hey that's you know x amount of minutes time to take them out um because again you, you know and at the end of it it's like can you sacrifice eight games um for this guy's you know career this guy could be the face for the next decade in new orleans so you don't really want to ruin that yeah, I think it's funny that you mentioned like the stopwatch thing because we're obviously sort of coming off the heels of the last dance and there was that sort of whole controversy where I, I believe it was MJ, right? That, that he could have yeah. gone to a certain amount of minutes. I believe it was like 20, 24 minutes or was it 12 minutes maybe even? And like, like he, he came back. down. Yeah. yeah, and they were just like, nope, he's done. He's over. And, and it's just, it's, it's interesting to see how in some ways the league has kind of changed here, but in other ways it maybe hasn't as much. And, and I think you make a very good point. Why, why was new Orleans not really ready to sort of give him those extra or like reallocate those minutes, you know, if, if the game was close and maybe they just weren't anticipating the game being as close with the assistant coaches, probably That's being the head. Too, yeah. yeah. Managing his minutes. So, so we'll keep an, a close eye on Zion. I'm sure because, you know, he's the big ticket item. He's the, he's the big ticket item of the bubble. So we'll keep a close eye on him, but let's, let's go ahead and get into the big ticket game of the night. And I'll, I'll hand it off to you. So it looks like you're flexing your Lakers shirt right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take the lead on this one. Lakers obviously getting that big win against the Clippers here. Yeah, well, I had a, I mean, quick note, I had, I had a tank top on before, so I didn't want to, like, show up in the stream in a tank top. So I, <laughs> I literally just grabbed the first shirt, and I was like, oh, this works. <laughs> um, no, obviously, uh, you know, the marquee matchup everyone wanted to see, and it, it didn't, didn't disappoint. Um, you know, the Lakers jumped out to a big lead. They came out kind of like they did it on um, opening night and on Christmas Day um, against the Clippers, which is why I was I was excited, but I was also my, – my expectations were pretty tempered the rest of the game because I knew that they were going to go through their lethargic stretches, and they did. Um, but also, like, you know, credit to Paul George, who was super hot, especially in the second half, and Kawhi, who did – he wasn't, like, full on the same Kawhi that we've seen. He was only 7-16, to 16, but still a pretty destructive force. He still finished with 28. Um, you know, LeBron did not have a great night um, shooting the ball, and even in the second half, uh, just his decision-making was not good. Um, but at the end of the day, he comes up with, uh, you know, tries to draw the foul, gets his own miss, puts it in, and then – guards Kawhi and then switches out on the Paul George in that final possession. And you know, it's one of those, like you deal with the frustrations throughout the, the, the beginning and middle parts of the game. And that's at the end of the day, why you pay a guy like LeBron, the big bus and not to overshadow, you know, Anthony Davis, who was very, very good as well. Um, that's probably the biggest issue for the Clippers moving forward is they just don't have anybody that can match up with them. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, just a, a fun game, lived up to the hype, came down to the wire. The, Adam Silver in the league can't be more thrilled for, for how it ended. And, you know, it's just a great start to the what has been a tumultuous break, obviously waiting for everything. Right. But, it, you know, it just feels good to have these guys back. And, and tonight was a great table setter for the rest of the uh, regular season. Yeah, it's it's interesting how this game sort of echoed a little bit of the first game where it was it was a bit of an up and down and it seemed like, you know, one team had kind of started to run away with it and then the other team chipped back into it and and I think that, that that was sort of where it differed from the first game is that both these teams are very experienced. So you saw them sort of level headly come back. You you make the good point about uh, Paul George stepping up, especially when Kawhi had gone down with the two fouls early on in the game. Paul mm -hmm. George kind of trying to keep them in it. And then he um, sort of came alive with the three ball. And then uh, Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi had a pretty good second half, I think, more than the first half at least because he didn't play as much. Um, but yeah, LeBron is is obviously the interesting point here, going scoreless completely in the first quarter. And, and you make the point about his pl uh, playmaking. He was a good playmaker in, in the in the early stretch. I, I think he had like five assists in the first quarter, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, in the second half, something just like, I don't know if he went to the locker room and took a nap or what, and like came out there and just tried to jump back into the game. But so many turnovers, so many sloppy plays. And that's not something we really ever see from LeBron. It doesn't matter if he'd been on off for months or days or weeks or whatever it may be. He's, you know, at the end of the day, this is a conversation you and I had on, on Twitter just like, like a week ago or something. Like at the end of the day, LeBron could end up, you know, the best scorer in the league in terms of numbers, but he's always going to be remembered for his playmaking more. So to see him go out there and, and really drop the ball on, on that facet of, it, facet of his game was pretty shocking to me but then you know that's that's the advantage of having a guy like Anthony Davis there dropping 14 in the first quarter coming alive in the second half having like 30 at the end of the third I believe it was dropping mm -hmm. the three ball hit, scoring from everywhere nobody could stop him and that sort of ignited that Lakers run and comeback at the end 
Yeah, and I, I think you know the word that I used. I think on Twitter was like hes- a lot of hesitation with LeBron, even in the, like the first half, carrying over to third quarter. Like he just seemed like he either wasn't reading the Clippers' defensive rotations or just couldn't quite make up his mind as to whether he wanted to go into attack mode or not. Which is, um, it's you know frustrating when you build up a lead and then see it just dwindle, dwindle, dwindle in the third. But like you said, AD having him is just he's such an I don't even want to say underrated because like we know how good he is, but he kind of does take that backseat to LeBron sometimes with all the MVP discussion right now between him and Giannis. So like AD in the third was just, you know, he just sensed that the game was going to get out of hand and he took it over and he's not a great three point shooter. He's better than he has been in years, but I think he has a good sense of the moment, like the timely threes that he hits. Um, and you saw that tonight where like he hit like one and then he hit another jumper and then he hit a you know, second three and all of a sudden they were back in the game um, and were able to kind of, you know, keep pace with the Clippers for there. Um, and then on defense, he had a couple of lapses that you know, some of those pump fakes that he was going for, but that's, I, I would attribute that to, to the rust of not playing against, you know, opponents. You've been playing against your own guys for a couple of weeks, but he's still such a destructive player on that end too, being able to guard like three, four or five positions, um, and which is obviously going to be, you know, huge come playoff time. So overall, you know, some bumps in the road from, from both of them, but at the end of the day, it was, uh, that was, that was fun, <laughs> exhilarating, stressful, but fun. Yeah. I, I just, I loved it. And that, that, that's sort of a perfect cat, but I, I do want to ask you one thing and sort of touch on one, one in particular player before we, finish off the discussion on this game Dion Waiters Waiters Island he's had a, he had a really good game I was kind of shot myself being a Cavs fan like I you know you see these flashes from him where he does show up and obviously he has that iconic you know shrug moment in Miami and whatnot like he he has those games but is do you think it's it's something we'll see a little bit more consistently out of him because of sort of the you know the up and downs that he had early on the season with the gummy bears and all that ridiculousness like do you think he's kind of he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's motivated because he, he seemed like it today he played really well you know he was facilitating the fast break. i in whatever however many years he was in cleveland i never saw dion waiters facilitate a fast break he would just pull up for a three-pointer it doesn't matter if nobody was in front of him or 10 people are in front of him just pull up for a three-point i'd never seen him do what he did today on the court yeah, um, you know, he yeah, he did he played you know pretty well all things considered. He only took like maybe two or three bad shots that I saw, but had some you know nice moves. I think he had that one in like the first or second quarter where he you know drove left, spun right, reverse layup under two guys. It was you know he he does he's always had that skill set. That's you know he's been there since you know he played at Syracuse. He's just kind of never been able to to get his head out from underneath him sometimes, and that's always obviously been the problem with him and even like J.R. Smith as well. Um, but clearly that they favored waiters especially more in the second half um with ad kind of once the went to the bench and you know that's how you earn minutes especially that's how you're gonna earn minutes down the line in big playoff games just, just stepping up um on opening night against the clippers also want to give the quick shout out because i feel like we have to do this every time now um just quick shout out to the goat alex crusoe struggled in the first half mightily yeah we were <laughs> my buddy and i were we were looking at each other like is he still the goat we don't know um and then came alive in the second half little layup jumper three-pointer and Honestly, the, probably the biggest, other than LeBron guarding Kawhi and PGPN, huge deflection, steal, and save, you know, kept it in bounds there um, with just under a minute, which, you know, gave the Lakers obviously an extra possession. So um, he, the GOAT shows up when it counts. I'm, I'm glad I found my fellow Alex Caruso fanboy <laughs> in, in you because uh, I feel like it was just me and my brother on an island out here where we are. And, and I'm glad that that you share that fandom. But I, I agree. Yeah, that deflection was huge, like you said. And um, I think the Lakers looked good good for most of this game there was a bit of a pit um but they ended it out strong and they they came away with the win and at the end of the day that's all that's really going to matter so yeah and it's tough too like we kind of talked about earlier like you know you don't have uh, lou williams you don't have Montrez harrell beverly probably played he didn't i don't think he played a lot of minutes not either. a lot not a lot yes. he had a couple threes late in the game and and you know he he's obviously going to be there on defense but he was not the player that we're used to seeing him be yeah so you know those two guys dmp uh Beverly had 16 minutes, which is obviously probably 10 to 12 short of his norm. So um, kind of a tough game to judge on the Clippers standpoint, because like you know, when Kawhi gets two fouls there in the first, like you would expect, you know, Harrell and Lou Williams to come in and just start killing you with pick and roll. So it's going to be different next, you know, if they are, uh, and if they're doing a meeting, you know, in the playoffs, whether it's second round or the, the Western Conference Finals, um, obviously you're going to, you know, the Lakers, and the Lakers know that. They know that they're going to get a different look um, come playoff time, um, and they'll just have to be ready for it. But they, they survived the, you know, test one, which is just getting out of the gate. That's all you can ask for. 
Yeah, well, let's hope that they continue to sort of up on that consistency um, factor because that's going to be the biggest thing here. But l- yes, let's, kinda cl- <laughs> let's close things out. And, um, you know, these are going to be sort of shorter plugs here at, on, on a regular basis. And we'll talk about that before we get out of here. But, you know, just, just a couple other things before you do close out. Um, thoughts on the look of the feel of like the court, the game, the fans, all that stuff. Does it feel natural to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. You know, obviously, they, I mean, they're doing a great job keeping everybody safe. You know, coaches have masks on for the most part on the sidelines. You have everybody, you know, there's plexiglass everywhere between all the media people, between the announcers. I'm surprised they didn't have it between the TNT studio. They had a big enough table, though. Um, but, you know, overall, just a really good job, obviously, keeping things clean and safe. I personally, I would advocate once the se- once they get back into the arenas, whenever that is, um, not necessarily that they'd be as spaced as they are now, but I would love to see more space on the bench. I hate seeing those dudes all cramped up next to like fans. Like these guys are professional athletes who are like six, <laughs> all taller than like six, four, six, five, like give right. them some room. Like they, they do right. in soccer. So that I would like to see that, you know, come out of the bubble. But overall, like I said, Adam Silver, they've done just a fantastic job. Zero positive tests. Again, they were, you know, reported that. So, you know, Silver's just, they're just proven why they are probably the best run league out of all the major sports. Um, and, you know, I, even with the fan crowd noise and the virtual fans, like that was, we had Chris Boss as a virtual fan, which was pretty <laughs> cool. So like that, that stuff works too. And like the music, like nothing felt forced. Everything felt like, oh, this is, you know, I know there's no actual fans in the crowd, but the in-game music kind of kept, it kind of just felt like, oh, we're back, we're playing. Like no big deal. And the players didn't seem to be affected by it either. So, oh, mm-hmm. you know, A plus all around. No, I think you make definitely some really great points there. Um, last question for you, since I guess this is a good place to discuss what the plan for this sort of segment is going to be moving forward. The goal is to do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sort of 10 to 15 minute updates. You know, it'll be news, it'll be game updates. We're, we're kind of going live to or um, recording here on Thursday night right after the game just to kind of touch on on the opening day of the season. But to look ahead before next Monday's when we'll start that Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, do you have any games um, over the weekend, you know, tomorrow being Friday? and moving forward i think this is going to upload on friday so it'll be today's games technically um that you're looking at um that excite you any matchups any teams that you're sort of you've got your eye on um yeah i mean i was kind of browsing it before we got on and, and some of the games you know there's not like a huge amazing slate of games um tomorrow probably the best one you're going to see is, is boston milwaukee which you know depending on how well boston comes out of this with kemba's you know if kemba's knees able to give him get him on the court um and obviously tatum and brown that could be a potential eastern conference finals they obviously played each other last year in the playoffs as well um, so that'll be interesting the two other games that i liked were um also tomorrow i believe houston and uh dallas, dallas um, you know just a fun you know a lot of offense probably not a lot of defense but you know we get to see harden you get to see russ who was playing very well before this happened and then obviously luca who's a perennial you know going to be a perennial mvp candidate it seems like uh and even porzingis who's playing well so that that'll be fun and also you know they could play each other in the playoffs you don't everything from like two through seven in the west is a total um crapshoot right now so that'll be uh, fun to see and then the other one was jazz thunder because same thing some some implications there um and you also get to see you know I, I, chris paul has done an amazing job with that team you know captaining them along with sga um, and we'll get to see everybody's favorite screen setter, Steven Adams, back. So that's always fun, too. Um, but those are probably the three that I'd be looking forward to. But I'll watch anything that's on. I'm just so happy to have it back. Yeah, this is just, just what we discussed right at the beginning when we started recording. You're going to have games basically running from, I think, tomorrow. It's, yeah, you said it starts at 4. And then, like, Saturday is, like, a 1 p.m. start. And it runs through at the end of the day. And the day after, there's, like, 2.30. So it's it's all-day basketball. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the Mavs-Rockets game because, obviously, Luka is my favorite guy behind LeBron in the league right now. And I just... I'll watch anything that he does, um, whether it be trick shots in a ballroom <laughs> or, or playing on the court against James Harden. Uh, I'll watch anything that he does. Um, the other game, the rail cam, though. I know. Right? Oh my god, that was ridiculous. I, I wonder <laughs> if I fix that or not. Because I, I hope so. I feel like somebody's gonna get hurt. Yeah, something. Because I, I can't imagine they didn't think about that beforehand. That was really strange. <laughs> um, but the other game I wanted to give a shout out to was Denver Miami. That's the opening game on Saturday, just because um, I, I love watching Nikola Jokic play, and obviously Bull Bull has kind of been the the surprise out of these scrimmages, the one I, th- I feel like the biggest takeaway out of the scrimmages was how good Bull Bull actually looks. And, and we'll, we'll have to wait and see what his minutes look like when he's actually playing in the regular season. But, um, you know, if they're running that backcourt with Nikola Jokic, two, two seven footers, seven plus footers and Jokic and Bull Bull, that team's going to be interesting, especially if they do face up against like Houston in, in the first round of the playoffs or whatever. 
Yeah, for sure. And and I like watching the Heat. I think Spolster does a great job every mm-hmm. year. And they Jimmy have buckets. Yeah, Jimmy did this Michelob, Michelob Ultra commercial singing <laughs> coming down here. So he's ready to go. Um, and then obviously, like, you know, Bam Adebayo. I like Tyre Harrell. He's obviously just like a, a free shooter. So yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll definitely be a fun match. So they'll, they'll get up and down. And especially if they give Jokic uh, a little more time handling the ball, too. We'll see. He had a lot of turnovers. But I think yeah. if he's – honestly, if they're able to like, give him more consistent time, like running plays. I mean, we know what he can do passing the ball so it'll be the nuggets are clearly they went to the drawing board and came up with some stuff during this yeah. uh during this quarantine so we'll see if they come out with yeah it, it's he's got to get used to his skinny body now his, his new build whatever <laughs> whatever he did to drop however many pounds he did he's got to get used he to his wins body. the award for i can't believe that he actually lost that much weight i, I know right really never guessed i know right it's it's gonna be exciting and and like i said this is just the first of, of many things that we're going to be discussing here um so do do turn tune back on monday after this weekend and be sure to tr- sort of check in with our regular updates like i said it's going to be news it's going to be game uh updates and recaps as well we're going to be basically talking everything and use this as our sort of main platform to discuss the NBA and what's going on in the restart. Um, you can find our social medias down here. Um, Jordan, you got anything you want to close out with? Uh, just excited to have everything back. We got a full slate of games tomorrow and Saturday, and it's just going to be great. And just, just get your popcorn ready and enjoy it. Right. I'm looking forward to it. If today was a primer, then I can't wait to see what's in store for the next couple of days. So um, like I said, come back on Monday and we'll be back soon.